In this video, guys, I'm going to show you the five reasons why your Doobia roaches are dying. Now, if they're not dying and you are watching this, then it's going to be the five things not to do to keep your Doobia roaches alive for longer. Works for everybody. And throughout this video, if you guys know of any other reasons, let's face it, I've only picked five reasons where there could be a million. If you guys know of any other reasons, feel free to stick them in the comment section below. I'll always reply to you. Let's go. So number one on the list, ah, -da. now this is if you've had your entire colony just die off overnight, it's all, well overnight, over two nights just gone, if nothing's actually changed, then it's just died off and you're like what, what, then chances are that's the food you've gave them, now let me explain that a little bit more in detail, if you're feeding leafy greens or fruit and veg and stuff like that, which we all should do anyway, and you're not getting it from a reliable source, chances are there's insecticides on that food. Let me explain. The farmer goes out onto his farm and he sprays all of his crops with insecticides, with fertilizers, with chemical enhancers, anything like that. Well, that's perfectly fine for us. Our bodies can digest it, all that sort of stuff. However, if you give insecticides to insects, to bugs, to cockroaches, what's gonna happen? Gone. Dead. That's the main cause of that type of death. So basically, you always want to go for organic fruit and veg. If it doesn't say organic on it, you can pretty much rely in the UK, Aldi and Lidl. They're mainly all organic, so you can use theirs perfectly fine. But just make sure it says organic on it or something along those lines. You don't want to kill off your entire colony, colony, colony do you? For me, I feed my whole dubia colony on my homemade um, roach chow. It's a dry food mix that's got loads and loads of basically superfoods within the foods that I use. If you wanna learn how to make that, I'll stick a card just there, feel free to click on that. It's super easy and super cheap. And then I also supplement it with various fruit and vegetables, just as a bit of added enrichment every now and then, and a moisture source, which we'll get onto in tip number two. Number two. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> number two, <laughs> right, <laughs> dehydration. <laughs> it does play a vital role. Now, dubia roaches, they are extremely hardy. It takes a lot to kill a dubia roach. But if you find you've got one or two die and then a few more and then a few more and then a few, and then bang, the whole colony goes, chances are that's dehydration. The best way to avoid dehydration is to always have a moisture source in there. Whether you use the commercially available bug gels whether you feed them with oranges and apples and pears, any fruit that's got high water content will help avoid dehydration. Now, also, if you do feed them and you're still getting the dehydration deaths, you might think, well, why? Can all of your dubia roaches get to that orange? That's something you need to think about. So maybe slightly less corrugations inside so that they can all get down to it perfectly fine. Can you put the orange or the apple or pear or whatever into the middle of the actual colony so that they can all get to it perfectly fine. Maybe stick two separate moisture sources. That's what I do. I have one over here and one over here. Word of warning, if you are feeding oranges to your dubia roaches, if you're breeding dubia roaches to feed to a bearded dragon, you might want to avoid um, orange or any citrus source of fruit. I've heard numerous times, but I've not seen scientific background that do, that Bearded dragons can't have citrus. If, you're, if you've got citrus inside your dubia roaches, you might get some problems. Like I say, I've not seen any scientific background to that, but I've heard it a load of times, so it's better safe than sorry. If you know of any other good moisture sources that can be used to breed dubia roaches perfectly fine and makes them extremely healthy, stick it in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear from you. Before we move on to number three, I just wanna quickly ask a favor for you guys. If you're finding any value out of this whatsoever, please hit that thumbs up button. It just tells YouTube that the video is quite helpful to some people and it will ship it out to a load more people. Absolutely bonus. If you want to know more details about breeding live food, I have done loads and loads of videos on various different live foods. Doobie roaches being my main topic, if you want to learn anything about all that, 
click on that playlist just there and you can look for those videos. Number three is very easy to fix as well. It's super easy to fix, dead, it's free to fix as well, but it's they get trapped in their own mold. Let me explain. Doobia roaches have got an exoskeleton. Their skeleton is on the outside of their actual skin. Their body is just there, and that can't stretch. You know, like our skin can stretch as we grow. Uh, yeah, solid. <laughs> our skin stretches, but theirs can't, so they have to molt out of their old skin. The way they do that is basically they hang on, push it out on the top and basically just sort of walk out of it, push themselves out of it, but they'll only do that once they've grown to the size of basically they're about to bulge inside that exoskeleton, then they'll molt out. They need high humidity to be able to do that. You have to think these are a tropical species, dubia roaches. So if you've not got the correct humidity inside that actual enclosure, they're going to struggle to molt. So if you've got dubia roaches of all different sizes, just basically looking normal, but dead, chances are that's the cause of it. The best way to rectify that is simply by spraying the enclosure down. You don't have to do a lot, just a gentle mist. If you're not using substrate inside your enclosure, like I don't use any substrate, just a gentle mist over all the bits of cardboard and stuff like that. Try and concentrate a little bit more over the hot side so that it does evaporate into humidity rather quickly. But just, I go through twice a week and just go, done, and that's enough. You'll also see if the dubia roaches are dehydrated as well back to number two if they scurry over to all the little droplets and start drinking the droplets you know that they're slightly dehydrated and it might be worth either spraying down an extra time in the week or providing much more areas of moisture for them to eat maybe three or four different pieces of orange dotted around the enclosure as opposed to just one another way that they would get trapped in the malt and another easy fix for you guys i've seen a lot of people actually put calcium powder or put calcium within the food that they feed to their dubia roaches. What that does, that the logic behind it is if they give the dubia roaches a lot of calcium and then feed them off to their bearded dragon, they won't need to coat them for their bearded dragon in calcium, which there's a little bit of logic there. But what actually happens is you're strengthening the exoskeleton of the actual dubia roach so it won't be able to break open and molt out of the exoskeleton. So don't feed your dubia roach a high calcium diet because it could in turn kill your dubia roach. If you guys wanna learn how I actually breed my dubia roaches, because I do do it a little bit different and I am extremely successful. Let's face it, I breed dubia roaches for my entire collection of animals plus some to sell as well. I also sell a load of them so that I can basically get some money to be able to fund the entire project from start to finish. If you want to learn exactly how I breed them, just click on that link just there. Number four, again, this is quite easy to rectify. It's have you got the wrong ratio of males to females within your colony? Let me explain. If you've got too many females, not enough males, the females like to gang up on the males. It does happen quite a lot in our society. Men, men are weak. Women are hard. Yeah, <laughs> I digress. The females will gang up on the males and basically push them away from the food or bully them away. Because let's face it, the males just want to mate, but the females want to protect all the other females or the females will get jealous of each other and start bullying each other. You need to have the correct ratio, but it works in reverse as well. If you've got too many males, the males are all gonna fight each other, end up killing each other. They're all gonna fight each other and the weakest one will be forced away from the food and all the moisture and stuff like that. The extra males will also try and overmate the females the female won't have time to recover after giving birth. So you just gotta have the perfect ratio. The best ratio for you to have is five females to one male. If you're doing just a home project breeding, it might be worth having two males in there, just in case one of them dies, you've still got the right consistency. I have in the past done a video on how to set up a dubia roach breeding colony. Within that video, I did mention how you could tell the difference between a male and a female dubia roach. If you want to check that out, just click on that card up there. Number five, 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 five. Number five is a simple one, old age. They are gonna die. Your dubia roaches will eventually die. Just like everybody on this whole entire planet, they're gonna die eventually. Now, a female, it's so many different sources of information, it's unreal, but from my personal experience, my females tend to last around about seven months after their adult molt. So when they've had their adult molt, they will lay nine litters of babies and then die off on the very last one. 
It's, that's just how it works for me. I've noticed it to be around about seven to nine months. The males, however, will last slightly less. So it's always good to have a little bit of a turnover of males. I might even start having a little colony of just males just to keep on going. But I've noticed the males will only last three to five months on uh, some scales. And it's just the way it works. It's the same in most societies, really. Males tend to not last as long as actual females. I feel sorry for the tarantulas, really. I mean, the male will grow up from zero to five years old and then die. Once it's got into its adult mole, it's mated, it's gonna die. It's either gonna die of natural causes or get eaten by the female. That's just the way it works. Whereas a female tarantula, they can last up to 30 years in captivity. That's just mind blowing. But anyway, I digress again and again. <laughs> That's it. That's our video. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see a playlist dedicated to breed your own live food, I'll stick it up there. And down there, I'll stick another video that you might want to enjoy. Thanks for tuning in, guys. You're all amazing.